Well, hello once again, farm and friends, and welcome to another edition of Farm and Simulator 2015 with me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose. And as you can see, we're back here at the BGA on our My Big Country map. And after getting all the silage moved over yesterday, uh, it's time for us to put this guy to work and make a little money. And uh, as you look, it's 5.15 in the morning. Uh, after we finished up our little BGA episode last night, it was pretty late. So I went ahead and fast-tracked the time over to the early morning the next day. So we can get a full day of work in. We've got uh, this little bit of BGA work to do. And then we're probably going to go cut some chaff. So well, let's get this guy fired up and get him started. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you real quick and an easy way to automate your uh, your telehandler or front end loader or whatever you want to use. I'm going to show you a real quick way to um, automate that here in the BGA uh, using course play and that way you can uh, get this done real nice and easily and you don't have to babysit it the whole time. Uh, so what we're going to do, and I'm going to clear some stuff out here for you real quick uh, so we can start over and show you from new. Um, in course play there's a nice little feature here on the bottom of your work bar that is called fill an empty shovel and what that is it allows you to automate your tasks that you do with your front end loader any kind of repetitive motion that you got to do over and over and over again loading a trailer uh, you know bga work well you can do it with course play and here's how you do it uh, go ahead and select fill an empty shovel and that's going to light up your shovel position button here at the top and what this is is you're going to be setting the position for each of the phases where the uh, loader is going to need to have it. Uh, your loading position, transport position, your pre-unloading position, that's as you approach a trailer or something like that, and then your unloading position, that's where you dump. And so uh, it's really easy to do. Now you can set these before, during, or after your course recording. It doesn't really matter. Me, I prefer to do it ahead of time and just get it out of the way and done. And that's the way we're going to do this for this real quick tutorial. And I'm just going to lower my bucket down and get it close to the ground here. Not all the way on the ground, but that's about right for me. So we'll go ahead and record that as a load position. And you'll see that it's turned green and the word OK is next to it. That tells me I'm ready. Transport position, I'm the believer of keep it low and to the ground for a low center of gravity. So I'm just going to rotate my bucket up. And that's going to be my transport position. My pre-transport position it's not really that bad here in the BGA because, as you can see, we have recessed BGA bins on this map. But if you've got the other ones, you do have to usually be a little bit higher. And you also usually have to have a little little distance on your telehandler. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of length, and I'm going to raise it up to about that height, and that should be good. So that's my pre-unload position. And then my unloading position, well, that's simple. That's just drop the bucket. So we'll just rotate the bucket down like so. And that will be our unload position. Now, I will give you one little tip. If you're using a, a BGA, and uh, let's say, like if I unloaded, you don't want the bucket to be in the BGA or inside of a trailer. Because using this method, course play will like slowly re-rotate the bucket as it backs out. And sometimes you'll get hung up on the side of the trailer or the BGA if your bucket's too low inside of it. So just keep that in mind. You don't actually have to be in the trailer. Just be right above the trailer and dump, and you should be in good shape. All right. So now with that set, all we have to do is record the course that we want the telehandler to drive. And that's just like recording any other course with just a few little extra uh, little tidbits of information that have to be added in. So we'll go to our course recording area and we'll say start course recording. And I'm just going to drive over here to the bunker and I'll make my turn into it. And right when I get to the front of the bumper, I'm going to stop. I'm going to go here. This is set waypoint. And I'm going to set that waypoint. And that's going to tell course play this is the beginning of the bunker that you need to load it with. And then I'm just going to drive all the way through the bunker, and we'll put another weight point at the end telling course play, this is the end of the bunker. And so what we're doing is we're just marking the area in which the telehandler is going to fill its bucket. So we'll put another weight point right here at the end. And with that done, 
we need to tell the telehandler how to get out of the bunker once it's in it and that's just backing out so we'll select reverse mode and we're gonna back out of here we we'll probably should have turned diff locks on for this but I think if I keep my momentum up we'll be fine yeah all right so we're just gonna back out and once we've made a decent distance so we can maneuver we'll slow down and we'll switch back into forward and now we'll make our way over to the BGA because at this point in the program we'd have a full bucket of silage that needed to be taken over here and dumped in the bunker so let's straighten up approach the bunker straight on and we'll get right up here in front of it looks good right there and we'll set our weight point again this one signaling this is where we unload our bucket now one thing I will tell you um, if you set your weight point with your wheels right up against the bunker course play has a tendency to come into this pretty fast and it won't tr it will trigger and it will drive past it uh, a little bit more pretty much this distance right here so set your weight points to where your wheels have a little bit more distance to travel because course play will end up slamming right into that even with my marker set where it is right now all right so with that weight point set now we just back away from it so we go back into reverse and i'm going to back up oops i'm going to back up and i'm going to cock my wheels and turn just slightly and then i'll switch back forward and then we're just going to drive back over to where the original beginning of our course began. And we'll stop the course. And we're good to go. Now at this point, with our bucket positioning recorded and our course recorded, all we have to do is drive the course and see if it works. So what should happen is it should come right around here, lower the bucket, move in and scoop up a load of silage. It goes into transport mode backs out drives over and then when it turns and faces the bend it will go into its pre unload position there we go and it'll drive up here slam into the BGA and dump in yeah and now it's gonna back out turn around and it's gonna pull forward and start all over by the way if you're wondering what the little triangles are and little X's those are um, previously recorded courses that I have because I have other ones recorded for all the other bunkers uh, any kind of things that you do it will show where other courses are recorded so that's what the little triangle patterns are all right so with that set this guy is just gonna keep on doing this and drive around and we can go do something else which means it's time to go get in our chrome big x wherever he's located and uh we can get started with it still got some sugar beets that need to be harvested but um in the interest of not having to go babysit it uh, i'm gonna do that a little bit later on all right so let's fire this guy up and we do have two cornfields that we're gonna harvest so let's get turned around here and grab our corn head. And we'll cut some chaff. And we'll make some corn silage. Alright, let's pick this guy up. Back out. Alright. And we'll head over to field 10. Uh, where we're going to start our work. And for this, I'm just going to use one truck because I think that should do pretty good for us. And get right up here. We'll unpack our corn head. All right, let's get that unpacked. And we'll go ahead and get our pipe extended. And let's uh, jump over to our tractor, the truck that's running, and we'll set up course play on him. Oh, this is a different truck. All right, so we've got our course ready, chaff to BGA 10. 
and we're going to go ahead and select combine mode for this we're going to select our combine which is going to be the big X and we should be good to go at this point now of course I'm going to be honest it's this guy's going to give me a, a hard time trying to acquire that chrome most likely so don't be surprised if he drives all over the world while we're trying to do this all right so if I go ahead and start this guy up and in course play I'm gonna tell him to come down the left side hopefully without running into any trees he will uh, pull up down the left side of this thing and we can get going the chance of that are probably pretty slim let's see what happens do we get lucky I think we did excellent all right so we can get going this is a little bit trickier than it was with the mower because the mower is not nearly as wide so being able to lead him in the field is going to be a little bit more difficult and yeah, we'll do our best to get it done but uh, we will probably have some issues with it when we get into field 11 I'll automate the entire thing I'll put the chrome big X on a uh, on a uh, path in course play and then I'll let that just do its thing and we'll just fully automate the whole corn chaff process but I can do it this way I just have to uh, I got to turn a little bit earlier on it we might miss a little bit in the corners or we might end up a little bit wide but um, we can get it done I just have to lead him a little bit to get this initial cut done on the uh, headland it's not pretty but it'll work so if I start now turning he should go ahead and start his turn and he'll start and stop and wiggle wiggle and yeah, we got him to turn around a little bit and he drove over my corn head a little bit dum-dums you know I wish I wish this was not set to shoot right at the middle of the trailer I wish it, you could tell it to shoot which part of the trailer to load because uh, then I could if he trailed back behind uh, the harvester a little bit more we wouldn't have these issues uh, he's still rolling all over that thing uh, he'd be tearing it up in real life of course he'd be fired in real life too all right so we'll push him back in a little bit more and of course I don't like him driving through the corn but if I put him down the right side he'd be hanging up on trees about right now so where's there there's a trade-off there as soon as we get this headland cut on I can switch him to the right side and uh, we won't have any issues anymore actually as soon as we get this cut in we'll put him on auto and he'll always stay out of the uh, out of the field uh, I know it's not perfect but it works uh, if we had a person with us they would actually be back on the right quarter panel of the uh, Chrome Big X and uh, we'd be shooting over the cab into the trailer and we wouldn't have any issue So we'll make this one more corner. And as nasty as it looks, just close your eyes and pretend that the driver was smart enough to move off to the edge. And we're back to the beginning of the field. So we can make a nice wide turn here. And if I back up, it's going to make him reset himself. 
one would think he would reset himself. Come on, back away enough to make him drive. Cheers, dude. Come on. Alright, let's bring him down the right side then. Just go do whatever you want to do, dude. <laughs> We're in no hurry. <laughs> it just cracks me up the way this is programmed. I mean, it's better than nothing, but there's some parts of it that just have some serious issues. And he is going to get lost and hang back there come on he's oh seriously come on dude it's like watching a drunk try to drive we're gonna get it right this time Okay, you're supposed to be coming down the right hand side. Uh, oh well. And for this, we're paying him like $1,200 an hour. Alrighty. <laughs> oh well, you can't have perfection in a video game. Anyways, we'll just mow on down through here. We'll get this field cut. And, uh... Get our chaff in the BGA. He's just about full anyway. So, 92... 93%. Ooh, missed a little bit. He goes to the BGA. All right. So since we got nothing else to do, we can always just sit here and watch uh, what he does. Because there's likely to be a wreck between him and the telehandler uh, when we get into the BGA. So we'll see what happens here. So he's just going to follow his route. Catch that right there. And head in. And as he drives through the BGA, he'll unload that chaff into Bunker 2. And then he'll come back to us and we'll watch him weave around like a drunkard and try to get up behind the combine. Up ahead, the telehandler doing its thing. Nice. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video on that uh, rental system. I think that's going to be a nice little addition to the game. If you haven't watched the video yet, I did do a little video on a new app that is, uh, or a new mod uh, called Machinery Rental. that um, allows you to rent machinery in the game instead of purchasing it. It was yesterday's video, so uh, check that out. There'll be a link to it at the end of this video. Alright, this guy's about done. Let's see how long it takes him to reacquire uh, on the back side here. Originally I had this course set up to use two trucks.
Um, such a small field, though. I just think two trucks would uh, run into each other too much. So I just figured, well, we'll do it with one. He should be able to get right up behind and reacquire with absolutely no problems. And he got on the right side this time. Cool. This will be a cakewalk now. As long as I don't drive like a drunk. Just call me Swerve. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's keep on going then. So I played a little Euro truck earlier today. And uh, I was going to record a little video. But I realized... One, I don't have any current mods because uh, it has been a little while since I've driven with any of the good mods in. So I did have to spend a little bit of time today uh, downloading pro mods. But um, I also realized I haven't played in a while and I'm really rusty. I was swerving all over the road. Again, call me Swerve. I'm going to have to break down and buy me a G27. Because um, I really do enjoy that game. And when American Truck Simulator comes out, which is supposed to be relatively soon, um, I'm probably going to play that a lot. Because um, I do enjoy the Truck Simulator. Um, and just the fact that it will be an American version uh, will be pretty interesting. I imagine it'll uh, imagine it'll be pretty fun driving a bunch of Peterbilts and Kenworths. It'd be interesting to see what kind of crazy cargo they come up with and what kind of routes. Imagine a long haul from the east coast of the states all the way over to the west coast. Won't be any kind of uh wow, I'm just kind of all over the road, aren't I? It's like watching auto combine work. Um, it'd be pretty interesting to see what what it has. You won't have any kind of ferry work or any kind of uh, um, uh, you know Euro train, but it would be cool. Maybe the maybe they're gonna include some a more cargo feature, and it. it would be be nice to see more unloading like at a shipyard where you've got to pull in and have your trailer loaded uh, you know underneath a crane or uh, maybe more at a rail when you go to a rail yard maybe you have to do a little bit of work with your track with your truck I don't know it'll be interesting to see what scenarios they come up with And it'll be different to actually know the areas that I'm driving in. Because I'm pretty well traveled in the States. There's actually, I think, I think like Maine is the only state that I've never been to. Uh, I've pretty much been to every other state in the U.S., including Alaska and Hawaii. Um, but Maine never made it up there. And I'm, I've been to New Hampshire... Say so it's just right up there in the very, very corner I haven't been to. Which is odd. I don't know how I never went there. My job took me a lot of places at one time. 
so yeah, looking forward to that. Been playing a little train simulator. I was try I was trying to uh, record a video today, but uh, as I said, I had a really bad lag spike in it, so uh, I had to re-record. And then I tried to play uh, the bullet trains, and uh, I have to admit I haven't played that much train simulator, uh, other than I've been playing the California legs of it, and um, they're pretty easy. I mean, you just had to pay attention to all the signals and. Um, and what's going on with the scenario when they just try to throw you a little loop but uh, otherwise it's pretty fun uh, the only thing I went over to the bullet trains and apparently um, there's a lot more you got to uh, to learn on running the trains I didn't realize that there were actually within the game download itself in some subfolders there's actually some m manuals for each train and each rail line and you have to actually read those to get some um, some signaling that they don't tell you about in the tutorial or in the academy and so um, having you know I just recently acquired that game and having not been that much experience with it I, it's it's interesting to start learning more about the signaling systems and, and how they're all affected on each rail line because uh, I was trying to run a, a, a line out of Munich and uh, I kept getting these speeding penalties because all of a sudden my speed would drop from like 150 miles an hour to 60 and I didn't get a signal for it on my uh, heads up display and what I was really, I, I missed a signal on the line. Once I started reading the, the manuals, I realized there were some signals that I didn't know about. So it's pretty interesting, pretty more in depth than I realized it was. A little bit better of a, of a simulator than I actually had had realized it was. So uh, that's been a interesting. I've been doing a lot of reading on that, trying to uh, bone up on all the, all the different signals and all the different little. Um, safety devices that you have to know about for the bigger trains. So it's kind of cool. And once I get get that understood a little bit more, so I can explain it, I will uh, I'll record some videos on that, and we'll uh, we'll do a little get some train simulator posted up. Um, maybe mix it up a little bit more. But still, right now, my main focus is, uh, is of course, Farm Simulator because uh, it's just interesting to me. And I think a lot of people are, uh, are tuning into the game and, and wanting to learn more about it. Apparently, there's a few more people like me out there who are just now getting started and playing Farm Simulator. So, yeah... And those who are in the know, who have been playing for quite a long time, seem to believe there will be a DLC soon. Uh, which will be interesting to see what kind of new toys they add into the game from Giants. Um, but honestly, um, from what I understand, uh, once a new DLC comes out, uh, most of the modders out there are waiting for the Lua file that is with it going to be released with that that will tell them more about how to mod uh, their their particular um, tractors and such so they can put more of the IC features and things like that in there and uh, so when that comes in and they get that proper Lua file uh, there should be a whole lot more mods coming out so we'll have to uh, hope for some really good John Deere product to come out I really would like to see some good John Deere stuff all right cut around here again we're just gonna keep running in circles on this because it's, it's hard enough to get that truck to uh, to get behind you and behave um, without him trying to having to switch sides every time you uh, start up and down the field so for now we'll just keep him over here on the side and drive around in circles and as soon as we finish this up we'll take him over to uh, field number 11 uh, I got my other truck sitting over there waiting on us and uh, 
will just fully automate this whole thing. I'll set up a course for the Crone in um, course play and I'll set up both trucks to chase this thing and it'll go like clockwork. I have done that field before with both of them so it should work out okay. He's going to have to go to the BGA real quick. I'm going to go ahead and send him on because he's at... How much has he got in there? I know he doesn't. I thought he had 91%. My bad. We'll just go on here and catch this row again. I was looking at the numbers in glance and it looked like he was at 90 like 91% but apparently he's at like 64% my vision's off tonight so yeah I'm recording this late in the evening it's coming up on like midnight I'm trying to squeeze in a recording before I call it an evening that way I can get this processed and uploaded in the morning So you guys can see it. Alright, well, with a little bit that's left, I'm just going to leave that there. I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to make a turn, and this should be our last run. And we can move over to the other field. Hopefully he's got enough space that we don't have to wait for him to run through the, the BGA. 89%. Yeah, we should be able to make it. Sun's coming up over the mountains there. we go all right cool all right so let's send him home make him drive we'll go ahead and pack our head up and we will uh, transition on over to the field 11 and we'll start getting things set up over there while he goes and dumps his chaff. Look at our trees back there. They're looking good. I don't know if I pointed that out to you guys. That whole stand of trees back there behind field 11. Uh, I planned it. I deforested that whole area one, one day. Uh, when I was... Uh, when I was uh, first getting on this map, I went in there and got into the forestry and just, I cut everything down, clear cut it all the way out. And then went back and planted all the trees back in there. I think I used uh, 20 pallets of trees. And uh, so they're getting to about the point where it's time to harvest those. It's one of the reasons I didn't want to run off of this map real quick is uh, I really did want to see how those grew how long they took to get to the mature state so you could make money and uh, from what I've read is if you plant them and let them go through at least two growth stages then you get about three thousand dollars a piece for them when you cut them in and sell them but if you let them mature all the way up you get much better and they are definitely looking good back there we'll have to ride back there and take a look at them in a bit all right so we're gonna set up for combine uh, we're going to get ourselves a course generated here. Oh, wait a minute. Stop. Clear out any course that's in here. 
Hmm. For some reason I had a course in here. All right. So field work and we're going to say field number 11 that was combine self unload that's not what I wanted I needed this uh, when you're doing this you're just doing field work with it so working width you need to calculate that calculate your width you just hit the calculator and it's going to auto determine it for you Starting corner is going to be the southeast corner. And we're going to be headed to the west. We're going to cut ourselves... Hmm, really one headland should be enough, but we'll go two. And I want to make sure that my driver's side is automatic. On that. He's going to have some problems finding us, but that's okay. I'll, uh, I'll go get him in just a second. Uh, let's see, but yeah, we're good there. Let's go ahead and generate that course. And we'll go ahead and get lined up for it. Alright, let me jump over and get this guy. Stop him, and he was trying to come to us. Couldn't quite drive through the trees. Alright. Uh, you know what, I probably... You know, my old course on this might not be good. Uh, let's see. This was... Unload to BGA Field 11. Should be that right there. And that would stop right here. So if I go ahead and just pull up here. And hit drive course we should be good all right so he's ready to go he's gonna pull up behind the big X all right let me jump into it and we'll just go ahead and put our pipe up get ourselves started Go ahead and pull in here. Let's see if I can drive course. Oh, come on, don't be an idiot. And this is going to cause a wreck here. And let's see if I can push him out of the way. I'm going to have to miss this corner just to get everything set up right. Should be able to want to get right here. Hit drive course and it should go. There we go. Alright, so with those two running, I can get this guy set up now. And I just pull him around. Same thing, we'll find that course, which is uh, down here. Unload to BGA field eleven. And I just want to swing around the only thing with this course I think it weaves in and out of two three and four um, hopefully it doesn't go through one I don't really remember exactly how I had it but okay so we're going to combine mode we're gonna be working with the chrome big X Unloading at 90%. And I should be able to see drive course. And it should sit here and wait until that other trailer uh, gets to 90%. Alright. So 
So just ride along with this guy, and then when we get up here to the, uh, when we get back up here to the trees, we can jump out and take a look at the trees and see how they're working. Take a screenshot. Let's turn all that off. Looking good. All right, let's jump out. So yeah, here are all the trees that I planted, and they look good. They look harvestable. Man, there's some money back here, isn't there? And the way I set these up when I planted, I uh, I used the tractor and I used the GPS mod to set me a straight path up, and I just uh, I would just follow that line and let the uh, the GPS, and then I split. And gay, I skipped a row every so often to give uh, to run through there, so it's nice and clean. Uh, it'll be nice. You could put a, you could get in your scorpion and just drive straight up through here, dropping all your trees, and then come back down this side, drop all your trees, turn around and go up that row and drop trees, and then I only did one more row because I ran out of trees and didn't feel like going to the the garden center and getting more. Yeah, this this area looks really good. It would be fun to get back here because it's so well laid out. And I actually put my tree line a bit further back from the field so uh, the trucks wouldn't drive into them as much. And uh, they still do, but not nearly as much. So yeah, I kind of want to get in here and harvest all these again just to see how it goes. Um, since they're all in a nice uniform row uh, like you would be at a tree farm. But there's a lot of pine straw farms around me where I live. And um, all the when you drive around, all the pine trees are set up like this. They have big, nice areas, perfectly width in between them for a tractor and the, the, and the uh, rake to go through that combs it all up and, and spits it out into bales. And so um, you see them all in a nice, beautiful row like this uh, where I live. So... Um, yeah, that's kind of the reason I set it up that way. So, yeah. Most of the time I would kind of want to make it a little random. But, um, I don't know. It's pretty cool. So that's about, uh, I think that's, I want to say that's six or eight days of growth. Probably need a couple of more to, uh, to get it perfect. To get in those nice tall trees. And see what I mean? This guy still found a way to drive in here and get stuck um come on course play pull up oh i've got that turned off <laughs> that's the reason i can't find this thing all right so we're gonna back up come on stop driver and turn around ah uh, he's hung on that tree See if I can get in here and get him out. There we go. We can get between these without any hard times. Yeah, I set that back to give plenty of room, and yet I still um, had issues with it. Don't know why. Alright, so this guy's done. We can send him uh, drive now. He can drive, and then this other truck's going to take his place. Hopefully without getting stuck in a tree. So we'll run out of the corn here. See what he does. They're acting kind of stupid. Anyone? Anybody want to work? I don't understand why this is being this way, but... I mean, you can drive now. 
Oops. Alright, let's see if I can get him to pull off and then I can say drive course. There we go. Alright, so he can tend to that for a little bit and uh, we'll just let that kind of go. Should be good. Hopefully we won't have any more stupid issues like we're having. It's funny though, like I said, I can I can do this stuff and set it up. It's not the first time I've tried to do this, and so I can set it up and I can get it to work, and it'll run flawless for me. Uh, then when I decide I'm going to record a video for you guys to watch, uh, it'll just act all stupid and uh, make me look like a fool. But oh well, it is what it is, right? I say that a lot. Okay, let's jump over into the BGA, see what's going on over here. So he's coming in. It did run it through there. I forgot. Oh well. It just means there's the possibility of collision between him and the telehandler. But luckily the telehandler is to the point where it's going to stay locked up over there for quite a bit. The... Uh, this particular BGA bin is modified to hold 60,000 liters of uh, silage at a time. So, um, with it automated like this, when it hits 60,000, it's just going to sit here and just dump in however much silage it can do until the bucket is. And it just sit there and run. You could actually stop it for a little bit if we wanted to. Uh, so, we could do that. We can actually just say stop driver and uh, that way we're not paying him and we'll give the BGA time to catch back up so the video is probably a little longer today than, than most of them but I did want to get uh, some of this shaft work done for you guys so you could see it and uh, set it up automated as well as just doing it myself uh, with a trailer coming behind us Hopefully the next changeover, we're going to let it run a little bit longer uh, so we get the next changeover with the two trucks. And uh, hopefully it will go a little more flawlessly than it did just a moment ago. Hopefully, maybe it got caught up because that one truck got stuck in the trees. But, um... There's the start point coming out of the middle of the field for them to run their route. And then they come back on the paved road and uh, come back here in this uh, in the back corner. So any minute now we should see that other truck coming around uh, this way. 75% so... It's just about to the bend up there. If you look at the mini map, you can see the yellow CP coming, and that just lets you know that's a unit in course play that's coming around. So he's coming around the bend now, back in the background. And we're at 85%, so just about the time he gets back around here, this truck's going to be loaded, and uh, he'll be coming over here to take over and hopefully we get a nice smooth transition between the two so one thing I'm going to work on this week is recording a series of course play tutorials uh, and we'll cover everything from just the basics of how to use course play and we'll go through each work mode each video will be you know 10-15 minutes long and it'll just cover you know how to set up for doing a grain transport how to set up for combine mode how to set up for overloader uh, I, I pretty much try to walk through it anytime I'm doing it in my videos but uh, I'd like to go through and do a series on how to do it how to get it set up organized um, and that way by the end of it uh, you guys will know just about anything you need to know about doing course play so yeah we got a nice smooth transition there it looks like that's the way it should work 
So that's both units being controlled by course play to do chaff uh, with the AI. And you know, once you get it set up and running, it seems to run pretty good, pretty flawlessly. So I still wish you could do multiple paths. Um, you know, in course play, you can only do six headlands total. I wish you could do unlimited. So you could just do this circular path all the way around the field. Because uh, it will, when it starts doing the east-west runs back and forth, uh, it starts to be a little... It takes a while and these trucks want to run off in the woods a little bit. So sometimes you really just kind of have to keep an eye on them. And again, that's the reason I set those trees so far back is I wanted to try to eliminate that. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying all the series and all the videos. If there's anything you'd like to see in a video, please let me know. Uh, you can comment below, and uh, I do read the comments every day. And uh, if I need to respond, I will in a timely manner. Um, but yeah, if there's something you want to see us do, let me know. Uh, we do have the. Uh, we'll be getting back into um, our next video. We'll be getting back into the uh, North of Brabant series where we've got our uh, chickens fattening and we're going to start setting up some pigs and and uh, and get into beef mod uh, that's something we haven't done we'll get into the beef mod and uh, set that up as well so all that's on the way and um, but it's going to rain on that map um, in the next day or so so that's going to mess us up a little bit might be some I might be doing some hardcore mowing off scene, off screen. All right, I'm gonna stick with this for one more transition, guys, and then we'll call this uh, video a wrap for today. As always, if you enjoy the videos, please give me a like. Uh, that really lets me know whether you're watching the video and uh, and enjoying it. And then, uh, of course, comment or uh, you know, if you enjoy the channel. And you want to get some daily updates on when these are coming out uh, you can just go ahead and subscribe and uh, as I said I, I try to do a video every day sometimes I get two a day out it just depends on how the hamster that runs our internet connection works uh, if he's fed and energetic and I get a good strong internet connection I can get a couple of videos up a day so alrighty And I'm already looking for our next map. There was a kind of cool one. It's kind of small, but kind of cool. Uh, listed online. I tried to download it yesterday, but I had some issues. Uh, I was only getting like 20% of a download. So uh, I'm going to try it again uh, tonight. And uh, try and get the whole map downloaded. If I can get that, uh, that's a new map I think we're going to explore. Because uh, it looks pretty good. It, it pretty much has everything. Uh, that North Brabant has. It's just a little bit more scenic. Uh, it's a smaller map. Uh, it doesn't have as as much happening. But uh, looking for the next variation. Uh, the same guy who did this map also has a new map out. Uh, might check it out as well. So That's what's on the horizon. And then of course I got some more mod reviews I want to do. Or mod showcases. Alright, so this guy, he's done. He'll turn off and run to the middle of the field. And we should see the other one. Headed this way at some point. What's that all about? Interesting. I guess I gotta jump in pull up a little bit with this guy that was funny alright here comes our other truck across we'll get him pulled up here and then 
We'll set him on his way. Trucking through the corn. You just hear the stalks all across the front of the truck. The grill's completely full of corn husk and corn cobs by the time you get back to the shop. The engine will end up overheating, blow a head gasket on it because, well, you know, you've got a retard driving the truck through the cornfield. Yeah, and a real field's not nice and smooth like this. He'd he'd have jarred all his fillings out, running through all of the all the furrows. <laughs> not what you would want to do. Hey guys, uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hope you've enjoyed it, and um, hope you learned something new today with a little more course play and uh, some farming simulator 2015. I'm Mr. Moose. Thanks for joining me. I hope you all join me again tomorrow when we post a new video. Until then, stay safe as always, and you have yourself a wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks again for watching this video, and if you made it all the way to the end, well, maybe you liked it. So give me a big old thumbs up. That like goes a long way. Also, subscribe to this channel. I will update the videos every single day, so there will always be something new for you to see. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll come back again tomorrow. Thanks for your support.